Hello and welcome to the new episode on Strategy Compass. In this episode, we will be looking at Balances Scorecard, one of the framework that can be used for implementing the strategy. In the first two or three episodes, we looked at the various reasons for failure of a business and we also looked at uh, the data that more than 80% of the businesses they fail to realize their full potential and 80% of the businesses they fail in the first five years from the date of their inception and the research indicates that out of all the failures 80% of the businesses they fail because of the bad strategy implementation so having this strategy having a robust strategy is not just enough we need to execute that strategy properly based on our understanding right and based on having the right kind of a framework for implementing the strategy we need to have a structured process for developing the strategy and then we need to have a framework that can be used for implementing the strategy annual business plan is not a strategy it's just a planning and it does not take into consideration various factors what we looked at while developing the strategy in last few episodes we looked at all those factors we need to do the internal analysis we need to do the external analysis we need to understand the market we need to understand the customers we used various frameworks for developing our understanding of the external environment for example we looked at pestle analysis we looked at portals five forces for understanding the industry we looked at other factors uh, we looked at the competition we looked at the customer requirements so all those external analyses need to be done to understand the external environment and customers and then we also need to do the internal analysis to understand what kind of skills what kind of resources capabilities and competencies we have as an organization what is our value chain how our value chain delivers value to the customer and then how we can configure the value chain for providing this different customer value proposition for our customers so all these analyzes we need to do before actually developing this strategy and developing this strategy we looked at the five step process in one of the episode so very first is understanding the requirements then developing the strategy and then implementing that strategy and balance the scorecard is one of the framework that can be used very effectively for implementing the strategy. So the question here which need to be answered or we will try to answer that question here is that what can be done for having a thriving business instead of just surviving and the answer is we need to have a medium to long term strategy and execute it diligently so we can't have annual business plan annual business plan can only give you the targets but how part is missing in that business plan you might have very high level understanding of how you're going to achieve your uh, targets but then that is not strategy and once you have a long-term strategy we are talking about minimum three to ten years of horizon for the strategy of course that need to be reviewed annually we need to do annual analysis of the external environment and then internal capabilities and all that we need to do but we should be looking at long-term horizon when we are talking about the strategy and depending on the industry you are operating in the strategy cycle can be as small as three years and as big as 10 years and once we have this strategy, then we need to implement that strategy. To provide you uh, some understanding of balance scorecard, I'm taking an example here, and I'm taking a very simple business. It's a fast food type of restaurant or chain of restaurant, and uh, their current performance level is that they have a revenue of five crores annually with a profit margin of 10%. And the company sets a vision that they want to double their revenue and improve the 
profit margin by 5% in three years time right so they will have in three years probably in the first year currently they are doing five years in the next one year they want to make it six crore and then eight crore and then ten crore in the third year right because the target is for third year they want to achieve ten crore and then same with margin maybe they want to improve in the first year at least one percent and the second year two percent and third year another two percent so that by end of the third year, they have a profit margin of 15%. Now, to achieve this vision, suppose if the management starts only tracking the daily sales and costs, will it really help them achieving the vision? It will not. It will give them an idea that what is their current performance level and whether they are able to maintain that performance level. Then what they need to do Definitely, they need to sell more. And of course, to improve the profit margin, they need to reduce the cost. And how they are going to do it in that case? They need to attract new customers. They might need to open a new restaurants uh, to attract new customers in a different territory. And at the same time, they need to retain the existing customers. And of course, they need to be more efficient for improving the profit margin. So these are three basic actions or they need to have in order to increase their revenue and profit margin. So then how they are going to do it? They need to find out from the customers because they have existing customer base and they have number of repeat customers. So they need to go back to customer and then ask that customers that what makes them to come again and what will satisfy or delight them so that they are not only loyal but they recommend to others okay. and then the customers they reply that they love the consistently good quality food and great service so now the business owners they know that what actually is liked by the customers about their restaurant. It can be many other factors. It may be the ambience of the restaurant. It may be uh, or vicinity uh, of the restaurant because they ne live nearby so they can just walk in to the restaurant. So there are so many factors, uh, but we are only looking at the two factors at this point uh, just to understand the concept of balance scorecard. And then you further prove that, okay, great service means what? And the reply from the customers comes that quick food delivery with a smile. That is what they like about the service, right? And then you further prove how you find, can deliver this great service that by making the food server process more efficient. And then of course, train the staff so that they are cheerful and they, are able to take care of the customer requirements and how that will happen is by recruiting good staff and training them on food serving process and then also create a climate to make them happy and cheerful so happy employees lead to happy customer that is generally true for all industries that if your employees are happy and they are committed to your business of course, they will make customers happy. So now we found out some factors which influence the performance of this restaurant, right? And now what I will do is I'll try to convert our understanding of all of this into a graphical representation so that everyone is able to understand, right? And then I will do kind of a cause and effect map of the whole thought process. And where do I start? I start from the bottom, right? So what is the most important thing for my customers to be happy is that I need to train my servers in uh, serving the food. And then I need to create right kind of environment for my employees to be happy and cheerful, all right? And that will impact the food delivery process. It will improve my food delivery process. And once my food delivery process is improved, that will satisfy the customer. 
and once the customers are satisfied then I will be able to retain my existing customers at the same time I will be able to acquire new customers by mouth publicity and uh, of course for achieving the kind of targets the restaurant is having they need to have some other uh, actions uh, for example publicity you know distributing flyers uh, opening new branches to double the revenue in three years and all those actions here right now what we are looking at is only uh, looking at the existing customers and uh, word of mouth publicity and once I acquire those new customers and retain my existing customers of course it will improve my sales and if I improve my sales I will improve my revenue and of course improve the profit uh, through other actions which I will take which will be specifically targeted at improving the profit margin and that can be reducing the food waste for example buying in bulk and all those factors you will be looking at so you will be looking at the cost how much is the input cost for you and then you try to reduce the input cost of cogs cost of goods sold right and then maybe reduce overheads so that those all things we are not looking at right now we are just looking at how to improve my revenues right and then once i have those cause and effect map and i know the factors how they are interlinked and how they are related i also put some kind of a measurement system so that i am able to measure all these factors and i also put these into four different quadrants and I'll explain you why I'm doing it. If you look at those factors that train the servers and create right kind of environment, it is related to employees. And it is related to learning and growth because we are talking about training the staff and all that. So this relates to learning and growth of the employees. And I call this as learning and growth perspective. Improving food delivery process, it's actually the process is internal so I call that as internal perspective. So apart from improving food delivery process, if I'm looking at improving profit margin, I will also look at my procurement processes. So all those process organizational processes, which actually deliver a value to the customer, these are all put in internal perspective. And the third perspective, I call it as customer perspective because here, I'm only looking at the customers, their requirements, and whether my customers are satisfied whether I'm able to increase my customer base and all those factors and then I'm also looking at the sales because they relate to the customer so all these factors and all these performance indicators I put them in customer perspective and the fourth one the last perspective as you might have guessed that it is a financial perspective where I am looking at my revenues I'm looking at profits I might have some other financial KPIs, for example, Cox, how much is my overheads and all those factors. These are all financial measures and they put in financial perspective. So what I need to have is I need to have some kind of measures and then I need to track my current performance against my desired performance level. So my target is, for example, we looked at is my revenue target is 10 crores. My current performance is 5 crores. That if you break it down into annual targets and then quarterly targets, then you can put those here. That what is my desired performance and what is my current level of performance. And then I decide on the KPIs or performance indicators. So in the learning and growth, I have three key performance indicators and that include how many servers I am training so you will be training your servers and you will be tracking that how many of them are trained I will also track probably the training man hours that how many man hours I am spending for training my staff and because I am also looking at right kind of creating right kind of environment for my employees so I will track my employees satisfaction survey right I'll do a survey and then I will have some kind of index to measure the employees satisfaction level. in the internal perspective I will because the cycle time is important that quick delivery that what they like 
about the restaurant so i will track that cycle time from order to delivery the time between the order being placed to food delivered to the table and that is what i will track and i'll try to improve that right in the customer perspective i will probably look at that how many new customers i am acquiring every month or every quarter how many are repeat customers and i will also start tracking whether my customers are happy you don't wait till end of the year probably every now and then every quarter every month you ask customers whether they are happy and you can have a very simple form to and some key factors on that basis you will ask our customers to give the feedback and then i have a customer satisfaction index i call it as csi that i will track whether my customer satisfaction is improving or going down and based on measurements because once you start measuring and then if you see the performance is going down for any of this measure then you will start planning your actions that okay how can i improve that in the financial perspective of course i will track my revenues and profits so my turnover and margin where my current performance is 5 crores and 10% margin and desired uh, performance in 3 years time i have 10 crore revenue Uh, target and 15% profit margin and as i said earlier we will break it down into annual targets and then probably monthly and quarterly so what i have is i have a cause and effect map which i am able to explain to my employees that this is how this business makes money right and you are also able to show to your employees that how you are able to contribute to this business in terms of achieving the targets so they know the reason why they are doing what they are doing and how important is what they are doing for this business right that will improve employee engagement and employees commitment towards the business of course you need to have right kind of policies for your employees and all those factors you need to take care to make sure that they are happy but this one page framework or the cause and effect map explains the whole strategy in a very simple terms to whole organization all right so what i do is i name them i'm not naming them but these are already named by doctors kaplan and uh, norton who developed this framework in the early 90s rather uh, after three years of research project and because this cause and effect map is essentially my strategy that how i will reach from point a to point b that is 5 crore to 10 crore and my profit margin from 10 to 15% so this is the complete strategy which can be explained in one page and then i have on my right hand side is basically is the score card which has number of performance indicators the only thing is i have put them in four different perspectives because they are relevant to those perspective i have put those in four perspectives i call it balance scorecard it's a scorecard which is balanced why it is balanced because i'm no more tracking just the revenues i'm looking at various factors which are contributing to achievement of my revenue targets right so it's a scorecard so if you look at the example i explained you is that the solution is to develop your business strategy based on your business this is very very important you cannot copy your competitor's strategy that okay if he is going for expansion he is opening new restaurant you also open a new restaurant no it cannot be done it doesn't work that way because he might be having a different set of clients maybe his business model is different so you cannot have a business strategy based on somebody else's business or what you uh, read in the book it has to be based on your business you need to analyze your business your customer requirements your environment external environment and internal environment and based on that you need to develop 
your business strategy and then you make a one page presentation so that you are able to quickly recall and you are able to explain and share with the whole organization with all employees to have their buy-in so you need to develop that strategy map which can be explained to your employees in the simple terms and then you need to implement your strategy using the balance scorecard what is balance scorecard we just looked at it balance scorecard is nothing but a group of kpis which are based on your strategic objectives in your strategy map so if you look at the basic design of balance scorecard it has got four perspectives we already know that and we have the financial perspective we have customer perspective then we have internal business processes perspective and we have learning and growth perspective and all these four perspectives have those objectives based on your vision and strategy that what is your long term strategy and what is your vision for 3 to 10 years of period so based on your vision and strategy you have those objectives in the financial objectives what you look at is from the owner's perspective they are looking certain outcomes and these are typically financial parameters right so then this is how much value actually you are generating for the shareholders this is the question which is answered by financial perspective right from the customer perspective we need to answer that how we are creating value for our customers so that they remain our customers and what benefits we need to provide to my customer so that i am able to retain those customers so customer perspective basically looks at customer requirements right and if it is not for profit business then you probably may have the other stakeholders or beneficiaries of your services because they are not paying you but then they are receiving your services so then instead of customers you will have the beneficiaries or stakeholders if you are in a not for profit business but for a pro for profit business you will have the customers and internal businesses process actually this perspective is for managers and process owners okay they are the owners of internal business processes and it answers the question that to satisfy my customers what process we must excel at what are the processes we need to have and what are the really important processes we need to be exceptionally good to make sure that we are able to deliver what customer is looking for so that is internal process perspective and then learning and growth perspective addresses the requirements of employees and infrastructure in terms of capacity and capabilities that we looked in the previous episodes and these are addressed by learning and growth perspective and it addresses the question that how will we sustain our ability to change and improve because you need to change based on the customer requirements based on the external factors and of course you need to continuously improve if you want to be in the race and you continue beating the competition so these are four perspectives which are in balance scorecard and because of these four perspectives we call it balanced so this for these four perspectives together they address the requirements of most of our stakeholders including employees customers and shareholders right so four perspectives financial perspective is defined defining the strategy from shareholders perspective we are looking at growth and productivity of the business from the customer perspective we are looking at identifying the cars target customers and their needs so it looks at the value proposition customer value proposition which i covered in earlier episode internal perspective looks at the activities which needed for creating the desired customer value proposition and differentiation because we need to be different from our competitors and learning and growth perspective looks at the organization's structure infrastructures and capabilities to execute those internal business processes which are critical for 
satisfying the customer requirements that which includes the skills capabilities knowledge of employees technology climate and all those things which actually help us in, in running the internal processes to satisfy the customer requirement so the strategy is nothing but the relationship between the drivers and the desired outcomes actually that constitute a hypothesis and that defines the strategy right so this is what my strategy is if you look go back and look at the strategy map this is what is explained in that one page that how i deliver customer value to make my revenues so if you look at logically what are the capabilities i need to have in my learning and growth perspective to run my internal processes to satisfy the customer requirements to have the financial gains right <coughs> so if traditionally if you look at the annual business plan and uh, look at the traditional organizations most of the organizations they have mission they have values and they have also might have a vision but how clearly this is articulated and effectively communicated that is the question which need to be answered and they might have some strategy which may not be as uh, detailed as what we talked about but some strategy they will have and then they have based on uh, strategy they might have some expansion plans or they might have some actions and then they have operations based on those operations you might have some kpis because maybe you are iso certified and they there is a requirement that you need to track the performance so without giving too much thought you have certain kpis and based on that maybe you can provide an employee some targets but the logical uh, explanation and the link to what it organization is trying to achieve is missing actually okay so there is a disconnect between the strategy and operation and balance scorecard actually helps us in addressing that gap so if you see the line of sight is missing here because there is a disconnect but if you implement the balance scorecard the way i have explained to you uh, looking at the customer requirements and then uh, looking at what needs to be done to improve the performance and all that so i have a clearly articulated mission i have a value because i need to have a right kind of a culture in my organization i need to have a vision in clear terms 3 to 10 years and then i based on that i need to have my annual targets and then once i have my annual targets i need to have the annual strategy you may have a long term strategy and then you have the annual targets and then you have certain objectives for annual growth and based on that i develop the balance scorecard and strategy map which clearly articulates my strategy that how i am going to achieve and what is my game plan how i am going to achieve my targets and then based on that i have a strategic initiatives for example training the staff why i am training i have clear objective so once i train the staff i will track whether that objective is being met or not right so i call them there are no more action plans they are basically strategic initiatives and based on that i have operations and then i have personal objectives which are based on those uh, balance scorecard or strategy map targets and then i have clear strategic outcomes right so there is a clear line of sight that so if you look at uh, implementing balance scorecard helps us in having a clear line of sight starting from the top uh, to the operational level so each and every employee knows how his or her performance contributes to the vision and mission of the organization and that helps in having a buy in from the employees and just to remind you this has to be done with all other stakeholders in terms of your suppliers your channel partners uh, if you have some outsourcing agencies so similar way you need to align those entities as well with your strategy they should be able to contribute to your strategy so what you do is basically you communicate your strategy to all those external partners and entities share with them that what you are trying to achieve and show them how and where they will be able to contribute to 
success of your organization once they understand that and then you have you can have some kind of understanding or some kind of agreement that this is what our requirements are and they will meet those requirements so what you do is basically you align your external partners and entities to your mission and vision and your strategy and that actually helps you in improving to great extent your performance because they are actually whether you like it or not they have an impact on your organization's performance so this is very very important this is something done either using a balance scorecard or using or having a some kind of a service level agreement what we call sla so that they know what they are supposed to be doing and and you give them those targets for those actions actually that this is what if it is on on time delivery from your supplier then you should be tracking that whether every time they are delivering on time when you need their products or services so this is how you align them right so this is what the balance scorecard concept is all about and if you look at the overall implementation process in one of the episode i covered this five step process for succeeding with the strategy and these are the five steps uh, we looked at right external environment and industry and competition and internal environment analyzing the context in which the business operates right and doing the assessment of all those factors whether they are internal or external how they influence your business so this is a uh, first step is setting the context and discovery based on understanding of the external inter and internal environment and factors then we develop the strategy in stage 2 the stage 3 is the implementation part where the balance scorecard and strategy maps come into picture and we have certain strategic initiatives or action plan and at the same time we need to manage the risk so this is the third step fourth step we just spoke about alignment so aligning the whole organization aligning the external stakeholders and aligning the employees this is very very important for any organization to successfully execute the strategy and the last step is to plan your operations and then track your operation so planning the operation and tracking performance you need to have the regular review of your performance you need to review regularly whether your strategy is still relevant or there are some changes in the external environment or internal environment that need to be addressed so what you do is you plan those changes and then you track your performance so you create right kind of systems and processes you prioritize mobilize the resources and then you look at your support function you also develop the strategy maps and balance the scorecard for your support function support functions may include for example it it may include hr it may include procurement it may be uh, something else project management so all those things need to be actually planned properly right so this is what the balance scorecard is all about balance scorecard helps you in executing your strategy and track your performance so that you are able to monitor your progress against your strategy and then do a course correction in case there are changes in certain factors which influence your strategy and your business right i hope uh, you will find this useful uh, in the subsequent episodes probably i'll try to cover some of the key steps in developing or implementing the strategy maps and balance scorecard but then if you are really interested in knowing more probably you can reach out to me we can have one to one uh, session where i can provide you some more details that how it can help your organization or where you are working you take care thank you very much for your time and next week hopefully i'll be coming with another episode with some more details about the balance scorecard till then you take care and bye bye